The last part of the discussion of uh, floating point numbers The last part of our discussion of floating point numbers is how we deal with them in the C language. C offers two levels of precision for floating point numbers, as we've already seen in the IEEE floating point representation, both a 32-bit representation for uh, floats, uh, as they're referred to, and a 64-bit representation for doubles. Uh, the default rounding mode is round to even to avoid that bias in rounding and always in one direction. And there's an, uh, another header file that we can include that has some important constants called math.h uh, that has constants, for example, for infinity and not a number uh, that we can use in our programs. One thing to keep reiterating and you need to remember is never to use equality comparisons with floating point numbers. There's just too many slight differences that could occur in rounding or in how uh, an expression is evaluated associatively or distributively. And, uh, we can often get unexpected results for our quality comparisons. The best thing to do with floating point numbers is to avoid equality comparisons and always do a subtraction of the two values and then a test that those two, uh, that, that difference is small. Okay. Another thing we should talk about is casting in C. Uh, unlike casting between signed and unsigned integers, in this case we do change the bit representation. So, for example, when we want to go from an int to a float and cast a, a, an integer value into a floating point value, we actually have to normalize that integer value, right? Get its exponent, uh, figure out its mantissa, and uh, then represent that in the floating point notation. So that means that integer may, in fact, get rounded. However, overflow is not possible. Floating point numbers can represent much larger values. Uh, than we can get to with our uh, integer representation. Okay, when we go from int uh, to double, we can actually get an exact conversion as long as the int is less than 53 bits. Because now in the double notation, uh, the fractional part is 52 bits long, uh, plus that one extra bit, uh, that one point that sits in front of the mantissa. So we get 53 bit. Uh, word size, and uh, our integers, if they're 32 bits, can fit completely in that. Uh, so there's going to be exact conversion. Um, if we have a 64-bit integer, we might have some rounding again. And of course, if we go from float to double, we also get an exact, uh, an exact casting because uh, a float is 32 bits, a double is 64, and it has a larger fraction, a larger uh, exponent field. So it can definitely handle any number that is in the float representation. In doing conversions of doubles or floats to integers, uh, we have a couple of issues to think about. One is that the, tr the fractional part of the floating point number may be truncated. Because as we adjust it to take into account the exponent, we may shift it in such a way to lose a few bits. Uh, by convention, we're going to always round uh, these values towards zero as we do the conversion. Another issue is when the double or float is bigger or smaller than we can actually represent in our integer notation. In that case, we'll use the convention to uh, set the value to t min, the two's complement minimum value. And we'll probably also do that for things like not a number or infinities and minus infinities. We might set to t max and t min, for example. Okay, so to summarize uh, our floating point representations, here I've shown five different uh, possibilities. So the zero in floating point is the string of all zeros. And we do that for convenience because now if we ever test for zero, all we have to do is the same test we did for integers. We just look for an all zero bit pattern. And uh, we know it's a zero. Then we talked about normalized values where the exponent is anywhere from one to two to the k minus two, where k is the number of bits of the exponent. And the significant is one uh, point m, where m is the mantissa, what's represented in that blue portion of the, uh, of the number. Uh, we also mentioned that we reserve the exponent of all ones uh, to represent positive and negative infinity. Okay? And we're actually going to put a further condition on that, that it's going to be all ones and all zeros in the fractional part. So all ones in the exponent, all zeros in the fractional part, and of course the sign can be positive or negative. For not a number, uh, 
we actually have many possibilities. Uh, the exponent is still all ones, but now the fractional part is non-zero. That gives us many, many values uh, possible for not a number. And in fact, these are used to signify uh, different conditions under which the not a number arose. And finally, uh, we have denormalized values where the exponent is zero, but we treat the significand a little differently. And you'll notice that in this case, we'll put a zero in front of it rather than our uh, typical one uh, for normalized values. And this is used to represent value, uh, to more densely represent the values near zero, okay? Uh, we're not gonna talk about denormalized values here, uh, but they are uh, treated in more detail in the recommended text by Brian and O'Halloran, if you want to learn more about that. Um, Finally, we always have to remember that all these representations suffer from the problem that there's a fixed number of bits, and that means we can get overflow or underflow. Uh, in floating point, we also have to consider the fact that even simple fractions like 0.2 do not have an exact representation. In fact, it, it, it's a repeating representation that we have to truncate at some point and round, okay? So we can lose precision. Uh, unlike in ints, every operation gets a slightly wrong result that is rounded uh, from the exact result. And these can pile up, and that's why we do that round to even, to make sure it doesn't go in one direction all the time. Okay. Uh, the other thing we need to remember is that we might get different results uh, as we apply associativity and distributivity. Those uh, operations, those laws do not apply in floating point numbers. Uh, because of these inexact results to every operation. And lastly, yet again, I want to remind you, never test floating point values for equality. Okay, that can get you in a lot of trouble because of these rounding effects. All right, that concludes our discussion of number representations.